what you think. Is it, uh, let's see here. As soon as it goes there, yeah, so I've got it now here. That looks good, right? The framing and everything. You want me to yeah. adjust it anyway? No, you're good. That's great. Yeah. Uh, uh, yep. Horizon. Looks good to me. Start off, Vadim, with um, don't just record us because people won't understand what's happening. Uh, yeah, record a little bit of that and then like go off to us. So then to us, it's going to look more interesting. Okay. okay, I'm just going to figure out where the comments are in this. Uh, where's the comments? Huh. Well, that's kind of lame. There's the event. We're live. There's 45 people watching wow. us. Hello, 45 people. But hey. uh, I can't find the comments on my own screen. So if somebody's watching Oh, here right it is. Now, live chat. Comment. There we go. There we go. Oh, okay. We have a lot. All right. Yep. All right. Good morning, everybody. Hey, if it's 480p, Jorge, that's just because it's the bandwidth that we got here today. All right. Hello, good. London. Well, we will, uh, yeah, let's let's take a quick little look here. Well, let, let's just get a, get an intro started, and we'll take a quick look at the comments and talk about our day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. I am here with Max. I made it to Spokane, Washington. Early, early, early flight this morning. 5.30 start. Got me here at 9 o'clock and time to do the show. Max, yeah, thank you so much for having me to your town. No problem. Thank you for accepting and for coming. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for. I mean, this is this is great. I think what started off as a, a little mini rivalry is is going to turn into something really beneficial yeah. to the entire audience. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go through this camera and see what it can do and hopefully create something awesome. Uh, I know that I. Well, you had sent me a list of all the kind of uh, ideal scenarios, the typical scenarios of where autofocus should work in these type of scenarios, and let's figure out what the settings are. And you, the audience, have put out a ton of suggestions over the last few videos, which I really appreciate. I've been pouring through those and I've come up with what I think are ideal settings, at least based off of the audience's use and some of my own use for these different scenarios. So we'll see how many of these we can test today. Uh, yeah, and I'd love to test it, like you went through your different settings and you know, even the little points and to say, hey, if you're shooting this, um, like beauty video, I'm surprised how much uh, ladies uh, comment and ask me, hey, what should I get for beauty videos? I'm doing makeup, and it's so that popular. sector is blowing up. So, yeah, it yeah, really and is. And I'm like, wow. So like to say, oh. hey, you should set, you know, negative one plus two. This is the, right. the best setting for that type of a scenario. Right. So you know, people buy the camera, and then they can know what best options. Like we talked about, there's no presets for the video. There is on the photo side, not for right. the video. Right. So I guess we're gonna try to find some presets. Yeah, I'd exactly. Find presets some presets. Yeah. Modes. People are gonna have to put a little uh, stickers on the back of their GH5 with their reminders yeah. until until there might be, hopefully one day we'll actually get presets in I there. Would, but, I would but yeah. hope maybe if there's, you know, there are firmware updates coming, right. so that would be nice to have. Yeah, it would be very um, nice. Because not everybody's gonna, hopefully, the more people watch this video that we're gonna be doing, the better, but not everybody's gonna see it. Of course, so. no, absolutely. Well, maybe we should. We should make sure that every GH5 owner sees our videos. That'd I would be, love that. That'd be all right. <laughs> I'd be good with that. Yeah. Very good. Let's take a quick look at the comments here. We got a, a lot flying by already. A bunch of people watching live. Good morning, everybody. Let's I'm recognizing see here. some faces already. Yep, recognizing John from London. Hello, Alexander Ahmed from Northern Cyprus again. Hello, Ahmed. Good to see you again. <laughs> Marvin says a Walmart show or two for one. <laughs> it's the blue light special. Are you doing GH5 focus? We are going to be working on GH5 autofocus today, but we're, that's not all we're going to focus on. We are going to work on some other things with the GH5 just because it's obviously an amazing camera and we want to get past the focus stuff as quickly as we can and then focus on the other great things about the camera. That's Hopefully that's we can shoot some, some good content. Like I'd like to have a nice reel in the beginning and, and showing off some really cool stuff. So yeah, absolutely. We'll see. Well, we got great weather today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, was it snowing this morning you said? Snowing and then raining and uh, hopefully by the evening when the uh, the couple's supposed to come. All right. Um, hopefully I don't have to cancel with them or maybe yeah. you can work something else out. But, uh, you know, with that 60p on a gimbal to be able to do some shots and slow it down. That'd be really I mean, cool. that's what I was excited for a while. For. Right. So I'd love to put something together that looks good. Right, absolutely. Music and stuff like that. Absolutely. So that's right up my alley, working with couples in that way. So. Excellent. Well, that would be fun to see. It would be great if we could even get into a, a, a church. You know, any churches you work at regularly enough? I was enough? thinking about that too. Uh, well, a lot of them, it's just... Um, I think one I may be able to do, and I've shot one wedding there, but a lot of them are like event centers, and a lot of times now, and then the churches, a lot of the churches are just really strict. They say, hey, if you have a camera, even when you go to shoot, like, you need to stay here. You cannot move around. Really? It's, it's crazy. Well, I guess a lot of videographers, huge cameras, lights, 
and uh, yeah, so <laughs> where we try to use small cameras, stay light, stay agile, nimble, so you can move of around, course. catch different moments, work quickly. Well, yeah, I mean, um, even you don't want to be this big, huge, ugly thing in the middle of the ceremony. I mean, yeah. you want to be as, as See, a lot of nimble and not, quiet as there's possible. There's actually people still doing that nowadays, really? but a lot of people, most people have switched over to these smaller cameras, but yeah. the mindset of these people that have been in, in these churches for a really long time, they still kind of have that. So sometimes like we own this struggle. space is my, yeah, my and event. Like, you can't trust the videographer. Uh. Usually they're good at the photographer. So that really is a shame. I mean, a lot of times, a lot of the weddings nowadays are venues outdoors. Uh, so that's nice, but uh, right. yeah. Wow, I didn't know that, that's crazy. I know one of the great advantages of the, the mirrorless cameras in general is yeah. the quietness of them and how when you're shooting stills, you can go into full electronic shutter mode and just be perfectly yeah, silent. Yeah, when I shot wedding photography, the most of the time I used the 5D Mark II, I started up smaller and then when it worked up to having you know multiple bodies, it sucked, especially when you have a really quiet, intimate wedding where there's not a lot of people and, and it's silent, like, click, click. <laughs> And you have to catch the moments, but it yeah. feels like there's such a huge distraction. I remember, so uh, so I, I have, I still have it, uh, the one, Canon 1DS Mark III, so the big, the big mm -hmm. pro bodies, and it had a silent mode on it, where it very slowly let the mirror up and down, and, but it was still, yeah. it still made noise. It was not silent like the electronic shutter. So Crazy. somebody wrote, um, Max looks happy. I'm always happy. If you, if you know me, I'm, I smile a lot. I'm usually in a really good mood and everything else. That's, so that's a good if thing. If I don't look happy in my, some of my videos, sorry about that. But uh, usually, people that know me in real life, I'm pretty much always happy. That's funny. People are. Uh, I, did you bring boxing gloves? Because people apparently want us to duke it out. No, we're going to knuckles. Piece of knuckles, raw no, bare knuckle match. Excellent. People are putting placing bets on us. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, there were a couple of actual questions that came by here as well. Oh, someone's asking about when using the GH5 as a live feed camera, is there a way to completely switch off all the info going out by HDMI? Yeah, that's a setting in there. Um, it is HDMI display, on-screen display, I think, and then on or off. So the infamous test that I got so much grief about because I recorded it externally has all that display on there. The whole reason I did that externally was to get that display, and that is something you can turn on and off in the HDMI out setting. So you can look for that. If, if you don't find it, put in a comment. I'll show it to you on the next Q&A show next Monday. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this, you know, this is an interesting one. Maybe you have the answer to this because this has come up before and I didn't. Jorge is asking, can you please explain quickly the advantages of shooting in 200 ISO or 400 instead of 100? I always thought less was better in daylight. And in film, that was certainly the case. Less was always better. 100 ISO is going to be better than 200, 400, so on. On digital, though, there's a native ISO. And often, Panasonic doesn't publish what that native ISO is. They uh, haven't mentioned anything yet. This is no. so much. Talk about that. Previously. Isn't it why well, on the GH4 it was speculated and I think it was pretty well confirmed that it was 800, but that was not, it was never made it official by Panasonic. Guess, yeah. uh, and for the GH5, we could assume the same or maybe it's different, whatever. Let's just let's just say it's 800. We don't Do know. Do you have vlog on here? I don't. I yeah, don't. I don't have it on mine either. So okay. I would have ordered if you could just order it online. Like yeah, right. Ship and stuff. Yeah, Panasonic. And I think it's, Make I think this it's back ordered what I saw. Uh, <laughs> it's a serial well, people, number. Pe yeah, people buy the camera, you know, so there's a bunch of people that want to buy a vlog. So I know on the GH4, uh, when you go into vlog, it's 800 is the base ISO. And from what I've heard okay. on this camera, it's 400 in the base ISO. Same with some of the other brands of cameras where um, one was like stuck at 3200, another one is uh, 1600. So. Yeah, there's a certain ISO that's the best dynamic range wise, and when you're shooting on log, you want the best dynamic range. Right. So they say, hey, you know, 400 is the minimum because you're going to have, you know, a wider dynamic range in shooting at 100 or 200. So is that so. the disadvantage of going to a lower ISO is you lose dynamic range? So if 400 is the native and you go yeah. to 200, you have less dynamic range? Yeah, so I actually have never go. tested this side by side because if you're shooting a regular profile, you can go to 200 or do whatever you want. And on this camera, now you could go to 100, right. which I love because there's other cameras at 200. If you're shooting right outside and you're forced at 200, yeah. or even indoors in, in my office, like I couldn't shoot at f1.4 on a camera I just recently reviewed because the base was 200. So yeah. I love that they let you do that, uh, but the purpose that why the base is, the start is 200 is because that's where it performs well. So you can go to 100, but you probably, you should be losing some dynamic range. Okay. Um, that's another video that I'll be looking out to make is how much do you lose yeah, you know, that'd between be great. that one to 200 or, or whatever else. Fuse is one of our regulars on the show. He's saying he can confirm Vlog is 400 ISO. So, Thank so you. that would, yeah. between these two bits of information, that would seem to confirm that the native ISO should be 400. Um, which is nice. Which it's be, not yeah, too high. I mean, yeah. some cameras are 8, 1600, and that 
gets to be more of a pain. And Dimitri was saying he thought that the base was ISO was 400 on the GH4 as well. Maybe it was. I had heard I 800, but I don't know. It's just, it's that's one of the frustrating things. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's G85. The other questions there, we'll skip past that for now. Right on. Well, so what is our plan for today? We're we're here at a cafe now. I'm going to finally get some breakfast here. Uh, we are going to plot out what we're going to do today, how we're going to spend our day here, make the most of it. Other than what we've already chatted about, is there anything specific that you want to try and achieve today? Well, so I know from your end, um, you're working with Panasonic System, and your kind of goal is to find the optimal settings for for the autofocus. For, for yeah, the for a variety of shooting so, styles, let's call yeah. it that. Um, so that's that's your side. My side is the same thing too. Like I'm not planning to sell my GH5. A lot of times I'll get loaners in. Um, but with the GH5, I know it offers so much. I'm buying it right yeah. away. I didn't add, request their loaner or whatever. I knew I'm going to be using this camera for yeah. a variety of uses. Um, so I want to find the optimal settings for you guys who do need to use the autofocus, and that's including me, um, and you know, to, to help out in these different scenarios. But of course, on, on my side as well, I need to know when people come to me and they ask me, hey, this is my use case. Uh, what's the best for me? I need to be able to recommend something for you guys. So we're not doing comparisons with any other cameras or anything like that, right. but I do have that side to that as well. Um, because I mean, our channels are different and that's a huge, I do yeah. a lot of comparisons. A lot of my right. videos are comparing. And right. like I said before, there's a lot of cameras I don't use for a lot of different reasons, but I still recommend them to some people because it fits them best. Um, so okay. that's kind of that's cool. My thing. Well, I know you asked me to bring a couple lenses that you wanted to play with today. So let's see here. Um, I think this is the big one you wanted. There we go. That's that the one. for you today. Really nice lens. That's 42.5, 1.2. That's the Noctocron. This yep. is the yeah metal hood. So uh, this thing is awesome. We're going to be using this. Yeah. Probably quite a bit. Yeah, so that obviously get really shallow depth of field, which makes autofocus even harder. It now does. one of the things about this lens is that it is being kind of designed as a portrait lens, it has a really long focus. You you have to spin the barrel a lot to get to focus. And that's designed for manual focus, really finite focus, but that means it's not gonna perform as well in video for achieving fast focus. So well, we I know that going in. I don't it. know that for sure. Well, because it, it is electronic, right? So it's not actually like a manual lens will be linked to the glass. Right. But this, I think, pretty sure it should have an electronic motor that spins it. It so does. We'll see, but having that shallower depth of field always makes everything more difficult. Because yeah, if absolutely. you take a, a wide lens at f8, let's say 12 mil at f8, you have pretty much everything in focus. Right. So at that point, it really doesn't matter. You know, you can leave it in manual and you get everything in focus. So yeah. shallow depth of field, it is difficult for photos and for video. Luckily, when, when I was shooting with the 5D Mark IIs, we only use the center point because that's the only one that was accurate enough. And we take each photo like five times to find the one that was in focus. And then, so we'd have four or 5,000 from a wedding, we'd give them a thousand. Wow. Because it wasn't reliable. Now the camera is the, you know, in, in photo mode, um, it works amazing and it's accurate almost always, even doing pretty shallow, which is really nice. That's one of the features we have on the GH5 as well is the focus bracketing. So you can use that for a variety of reasons, and we've talked about this on the show before, we're using the focus bracketing for focus stacking, but you can like use where it. it takes yeah, exactly, it moves the focus point a yeah. little bit, but that's another great use case of it when you have something super shallow, and it's like, well, do I want to focus on this end of the eye, this end of the eye, where, you know, what's the best focus point? You can let the camera shoot them, and then, like, your five shots with a cannon just to get one that you hope is right. Here you got five shots where you could pick, well, get what is ideal, you which one, yeah, and yeah choose it later. As well, when you're doing, like, product photography, you want to get a close-up, but when you're close, you don't have a lot in focus to be able to stack and yeah. have everything yeah, in focus. Yeah, the focus stacking is, is super really, cool. That's a really nice feature. Yeah, super cool. So I also brought the 100, that's just the Mark One, but the 70 to 200, I'm sorry, the 35 to 100, so 70 mm -hmm. to 200 equivalent F2.8, so we'll, we'll work with that one as well. Yeah, these are the two lenses that I, I don't have that I wanted to use. Right, right. So. Yeah, and the only difference really on the, this is the Mark One, the Mark Two has better uh, weather sealing and better image stabilization. But for other focus speeds, the same. yeah. Other than that, it's basically the same. So, yeah, that's so that should be good. And then I don't know what else did I bring. Um, oh, I brought the 15. I mean, this is one of my favorite lenses, the 1517 Leica lens. Put it that way so people can see it. Uh, so there's that one. And I don't think we'll use it, but I brought this anyway. The 7 to 14 zoom. But what else is in here? I just stacked pretty much. Oh, and then I did bring the the battery grip, but more importantly the XLR1. So we might end up doing some of our interview stuff with this guy and we can stick this on and get 
two separate labs into the nice. into the ports on here. So yeah, that is nice. Lots of options. Right on. Oh, we're going to have some fun today. See what we can create. It's going to be a packed day. Right. Yeah, good thing we have a whole day. So. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. All right. Uh, is your coffee poison? <laughs> People are talking about, like, wow. I, did, I just nice didn't say guy. anything. So. That's okay. We had, we had somebody else taste test in, in advance. No worries. I'm just going to poison him and take all his gear. <laughs> that's, oh, that's funny. Okay, someone's saying hello from Korea. That's awesome. It's just people from all over the place. This is so cool. How does that 15 millimeter compare against Panasonic's old 21.7 in terms of image quality? Uh, is that, hold on, is that this lens? I got my G7 on here for when we're shooting. No, this is the 14. I don't think I ever shot with the 21.7. I don't think I did. This Leica, this 15 is a Leica lens, so this thing is super sharp. I love this lens. It's funny, if I, I've seen people say that this lens isn't sharp, and I'm like, are you kidding me? This thing is tack sharp. So if you're out there and have one of these and it isn't sharp, maybe you have a bad copy, because I think this is a fabulous lens. I love it, love it. All righty. Let's wrap this thing up and get to work, figure out what it is we're going to yeah, do today. Let's do it. So thanks all for tuning in today, as always. Tomorrow morning, I won't be able to go live, because it... 9.30, or I won't be able to go live at my normal time. At 9.30, I will be in the air. So I will either go live at like 8 or 8.30, or I might just skip it all together. We'll see how the morning goes and what the bandwidth is like at the hotel. But uh, otherwise, we are back on Wednesday as normal. On Wednesday as well, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be starting off a series on my whole live switching system, which people have been asking about for ages, and I'm finally, finally doing that. So that's going to happen on Wednesday. You're going to watch that? Yeah, cool. Right on. Yeah, that's a that's a big one. It's a there's so much stuff. It's a three part because there's just so many pieces to it. Figure, you know, do it right. So. And you spent so much time troubleshooting and getting oh everything God. set up. Yeah, and it works now, right? It, it's yeah. it's reliable. It's consistent. I love it. It's a really cool system. It's way more than I needed when I started. But it's funny, you know, you you have this capability and you go, okay, well I have that capability. How can I use it? You start adding things to the show. It's fun. It's fun to do. Right on. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks again, everybody, for watching. Max, thank you again for having no me problem. out here. It's going to be a going to be a great day, and we will. Oh, and we should tell what we're going to do with the content. So we're going to be shooting all this stuff. You know, we have a couple of GH5s. We're going to shoot a bunch of test content, and then I think did we? Did you agree with what I proposed in the email? I'm not sure. I don't remember now. To share our footage. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to kind of pool our footage together, and uh, we've got Vadim here shooting behind the scenes, so we're going to get some of that. I might stick a camera on sticks and put a little behind the scenes, and just pool it all together, and then we're each going to edit our own piece out of this. And I think we're going to sit down at the end of the day and do a little wrap yeah, up, a yeah. little summary exactly. that we can both use. So we'll each have different videos on our channel that uh, cover today's activities to give you both, to give you guys two different things to watch. But yeah, that's the that's the general plan. So yeah. good stuff. All right, take care, guys. You See you next time. Bye bye.